Land of the Makuntaweep, where the North Fork of the Virgin River's crystal clear water has carved deep slot canyons of red sandstone that stand nearly 3,000 feet tall. Nestled between the Colorado Plateau, the Great Basin, and the Mojave Desert, Zion towers over much of the surrounding landscape. Come along for the journey as we share the wonder of Zion and provide you with many ideas for your next trip out into the wild. Let's talk about how to get to Zion. As many of us have to fly into Zion from places far away, this is our recommendation for the most convenient way to reach the park. One of the most popular means of traveling to Zion is flying into the Las Vegas International Airport, renting a car, and making the three-hour drive into the town of Springdale, Utah. From here, this little town serves as the west entrance to Zion. This option is usually one of the most cost-effective and most convenient for most people traveling from out of state. Be aware that other options do exist, such as flying into smaller regional airports or road tripping from further away but we recommend sticking with the easy and the tried and true. There are endless opportunities to enjoy nature at its finest here, but before starting any hike or nature walk in the park, we recommend getting a map from a park ranger or from one of the visitor centers to orient yourself as well as locate where your upcoming adventures are gonna be. A good warm up for your legs on the first day is a scenic nature walk or a non strenuous hike, such as the Weeping Rock Trail or the Canyon Overlook Trail. If hanging gardens and crystal clear spring water seeping right out of the side of a sandstone cliff sound interesting to you, the Weeping Rock Trail is only a half mile trail that's fully paved and climbs only about 100 feet, so it's accessible to a large number of visitors. This is actually the shortest trail in the park, but don't be fooled, Weeping Rock will not disappoint. At the end of the trail, you will find a huge rock overhang with a misty waterfall coming straight out of the side of the cliff. If you walk up underneath the overhang and then turn around, you'll be greeted with grand views of Zion Canyon and a unique vantage point for the Great White Throne Peak to the upper left. Once you've had a taste of the grandeur of the park, it's time to really take it to the next level. It all starts at the Temple of Sinawava at the end of the 15 mile long Zion Canyon. One of the most pleasant summer hiking experiences you'll ever have is usually referred to as the Narrows. This trail starts on the paved river sidewalk for about one mile before dropping you off directly into the water, the Virgin River. During the summertime when daytime temperatures can exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the water in the river will be somewhere in the 60 degree range, providing some incredible relief from the scorching hot summer sun. Not only that, but as you begin your careful trek through the river, the canyon walls get so narrow that there's usually only a few minutes of sunlight per day. Talk about a great way to cool off while hiking at the same time. The Narrows doesn't really end because you can continue to ascend up the river as far as you'd like, However, most people go for a handful of miles before turning around. Walking upstream is considered the bottom-up narrows approach. There is a top-down narrows option that's much longer. It involves getting a permit and potentially camping in the canyon as well. One pro tip on the narrows, since you're going to be wading through knee or thigh deep water in some areas, it's a good idea to bring hiking or trekking poles of some kind or even just a wooden stick. Also, if you want to make the hike a little bit more enjoyable on your feet, stop by one of the outfitters just right outside of the park and rent some neoprene socks and shoes. These act like wetsuits for your feet and will also make it easier to navigate the loose rock on the bottom of the river. Okay, now on to the biggest, probably most popular hike that we know of in Zion, Angel's Landing. Angel's Landing is easily one of the most iconic trails in Zion National Park, if not in all of the United States. If you search the internet for the best hikes in the country, Angel's Landing is usually somewhere on the list. Probably one of the best hikes I've ever done before, and I don't generally consider myself a huge risk taker. So climbing up a narrow single file trail that has chains to hold on to in various sections was a first for me when I originally climbed up Angel's Landing, but it was insanely fun. 
This trail is about 5 to 6 miles round trip, but it does climb up a decent elevation gain of about 1500 feet. So definitely start it earlier in the day before the sun starts beating directly down on you. The views along the trail are great, but once you reach the summit, these views will be something you remember for a long time. Once you're at the top, just sit down, have a snack, and enjoy the sights, enjoy the sound of the wind. While you're up there, be sure to take plenty of pictures for your Instagram. There are more trails in Zion than we've gone over here in this video, many more actually, including entire canyons and wilderness areas that are probably a lot less trafficked. You could easily spend an entire month or even an entire year here and not see everything there is to offer. Some of the additional areas of the park that are worth mentioning are the Observation Point Trail System, which has an option to branch off to Hidden Canyon Trail if that's been reopened, and the eastern side of the park where you'll find Checkerboard Mesa and some really cool, smooth-looking sandstone mountains that will make for some cool photos. In terms of accommodations, Zion is in a fairly isolated location, so your options will probably be pretty simple. For most travelers, we recommend finding a hotel in the town of Springdale. There are free shuttles from most of these hotels right into the park, and speaking from personal experience, it doesn't really get much more convenient than that. This option leaves you with many luxuries of everyday travel while keeping you pretty close to the park too. We aren't experts on the food scene out in Zion, but we can offer one tip that we think is worthwhile. There are a handful of restaurants just right outside the park on the other side of the visitor center, and these are genuinely walking distance away. Some of your options include the Zion Canyon Brew Pub for a nice refreshing beverage, Cafe Soleil for a traditional cafe experience, and Thai Sapa for a little bit more variety. In my personal opinion, after a nice morning hike, there's really nothing better than just walking right across through the visitor center, out of the park, and over to one of these nice restaurants and having a refreshing meal and a nice refreshing beverage to re-energize you for your afternoon activities. We hope you enjoyed our hiking guide to Zion National Park. If you'd like to see more guides like this on other national parks in the future, please subscribe to our channel. We have many more of these in the works, and we can't wait to share our thoughts on some of our favorite places with everyone out there. Until then, we'll see you on the trail.